If you've ever tuned into a Formula One race, IndyCar, or even professional track events, you might have noticed something unusual about the tires. They look completely bald. No grooves, no fancy tread patterns, just smooth black rubber gripping the asphalt. At first, that seems counterintuitive. After all, we've always been told that worn out tires are dangerous. So why would the fastest cars in the world choose to run on tires that look worn down to nothing? Well, that's because these are no ordinary tires. They're called slicks. And today, we're going to break down exactly why racing cars use slick tires instead of treaded ones right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get into slicks, we need to understand how tires actually keep a car on the road. Grip doesn't come from magic, it comes from friction. When rubber makes contact with the road surface, it sticks at a microscopic level. The more rubber touching the road, the better the grip. That's why surface area is king. Think of it like trying to stop yourself from sliding on ice. If you're wearing shoes with more rubber in contact with the ground, you'll have better traction than shoes with thin, uneven contact points. With regular road cars, however, things get complicated. Roads aren't always smooth or dry. You have rain, puddles, oil patches, gravel, and even snow depending on where you live. That's where tread patterns come in. The grooves channel water and debris away so the rubber can still touch the road. Without those grooves, your car would hydroplane in the rain like a boat on water. But on a racetrack, the situation is different. Racetracks are controlled environments. Unlike city streets, they're cleaned, paved, and designed with performance in mind. Drivers don't have to worry about potholes or puddles as much. The surface is smooth and predictable. That means one of the main reasons tread exists, handling unpredictable conditions just isn't a factor most of the time. So instead of worrying about rain or gravel, racing engineers can focus purely on maximizing grip. And here's the key. When you take away tread, you maximize the amount of rubber touching the asphalt. That's why slick tires exist. They're like the raw, unfiltered version of a tire. No distractions, no compromises, just pure rubber-to-road contact. Let's break this down visually. Imagine you have two tires pressed against the road, one with tread, one perfectly smooth. The treaded tire has less rubber actually making contact because those grooves are cutting into the surface area. The slick tire, on the other hand, is like pressing your entire palm flat against a table. Every bit of rubber gets to do its job. This means slick tires have significantly more grip on dry surfaces than treaded ones. And in racing, grip equals speed. It allows cars to brake harder, accelerate quicker, and take corners faster without sliding out of control. It's not about looking cool or saving money. Slicks are simply the most efficient tool for the job. Now, here's something casual viewers don't always realize. Racing tires are designed to work at very high temperatures. A street tire on your car might get warm, but a racing slick is meant to heat up to around 100, 120 degrees Celsius. That's over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When rubber heats up, it gets softer, stickier, and more flexible. That means even more grip. The combination of slick surfaces and heat creates an almost glue-like effect between tire and track. If you've ever seen cars in Formula One weaving back and forth behind a safety car, that's not for show. They're literally trying to keep their slick tires hot enough to remain sticky. Another big difference is durability. Street tires are made to last tens of thousands of miles. Racing slicks, they sometimes don't even last a full race. They're designed for maximum grip, not longevity. 
In Formula One, for example, tires can degrade in just a handful of laps depending on conditions, forcing teams to pit and change them. This trade-off is important. If you want the ultimate performance, you have to sacrifice durability. That's why slicks are made of much softer compounds than your average road tire. They grip better, but they wear out fast. Racing teams accept this because shaving off a fraction of a second per lap is worth more than tire life. We can't talk about racing tires without mentioning downforce. Modern race cars are designed with wings, diffusers, and aerodynamic tricks that push the car into the ground at high speeds. This increases the load on the tires, which in turn increases friction. Slick tires maximize the effect of that downforce by offering as much contact area as possible. Think of it like pressing harder on a piece of tape on your package. The more pressure you apply, the harder it sticks. Racing cars use both aerodynamics and slick tires to essentially glue themselves to the track. Without slicks, much of that aerodynamic advantage would be wasted. It's easy to look at slick tires and think they're just better tires, but really they're specialized tools. Street tires are designed for versatility, rain, sun, gravel, long trips, potholes. Slicks are designed for one thing only, controlled high-speed racing on dry, prepared tracks. Think of it like comparing a Swiss Army knife to a surgeon's scalpel. One is versatile and practical for everyday life, while the other is hyper-specialized and only works in the right setting. Both have their place, but you wouldn't want to swap them. So, why do racing cars use slick tires instead of treaded ones? It all comes down to maximizing grip in the most controlled conditions possible. Treads are for handling uncertainty, rain, water, debris. But in the predictable world of a racetrack, every bit of rubber counts. Slicks provide more contact area, more heat, more grip, and ultimately more speed. They're not practical for your daily commute, and they certainly won't help you in the rain. But on the track, where fractions of a second matter and every ounce of performance is squeezed out of the car, slick tires are the perfect weapon. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.